Hey, everybody. How are you? It's another episode of Monday School, and I'm so happy to have you with me again. Bo Prosser from the Center for Christian Education here. Uh, grateful to you for being with me and uh, for the consistency that you come week after week as we share uh, lessons together. Uh, tonight, we're looking at the Smith & Helwes Formation Lesson Plan for Sunday, August the 11th. David, Courageous Leadership. We're in a unit on leadership, and we've been looking at several different folks. Today, we're looking at David. Next week, we finish up the unit with Jesus. So uh, thanks for joining in. And uh, actually, Paul next week, Jesus the last week. So I got a little ahead of, ahead of myself. Uh, today, you'll notice in the lesson plan that I'm saying uh, this is 1 Samuel 17, 1 through 51. Even though that's not a focal passage, I think in order to understand the focal package, you need the passage, you need to hear the whole story, which is why I'm calling attention uh, to this whole passage, and that gives you the story along the way. Uh, it's a, it's it's needed, at least for me, to understand the, the whole context in which David and his family were living and the fear that they were living with. Goliath was wreaking havoc all over the country, so much that the Philistines taunted the Israelites, saying, go get one man, bring one man. If you can, if your man can defeat our man, we'll be your servants. It is reminiscent of modern day WWE wrestling. Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers, Andre the Giant was no Goliath, but a sight to behold and a wrestler above wrestlers. There's a documentary on Andre the Giant on Netflix, I believe it is. You might want to check that out sometime. But but I digress. Goliath and the Philistines are at war with Israel. It seems like forever in Israel's history, they have been at war. And this is just one more of those episodes when war is, is raging in Israel. Uh, for all of us, there are giants in our lives that test us and bring fear to us. And we hear people tell us, trusting God, but that, that may be a little more difficult to trust in God. Many of us today place our faith in ourselves and give Saul-like faith to trust in God. Saul said, I'm a man of God, and we're doing this violence because of God. But Saul really didn't trust God at the end of the day. Saul had an army, and he trusted his army. He trusted his own ability to lead that army. He really didn't have faith in God. And, and many of us the same way. I can figure this out if I just study hard enough, if I just work hard enough, if I just pray hard enough, I can figure this out. David did none of those things. He had a confidence deep inside of him that that came from a deep and enduring trust in God. David claimed the personal name of God for support. David called on a personal and real faith. And we have the same personal God available to us as did David. And we can draw on the same faith as did David. If, if we will move ourselves into a spirit of prayer and a spirit of faith and a spirit of trusting, not blind faith, not whatever God gives me, I'll accept, but a real faith that lets us 
call on God to help us discipline ourselves to overcoming fear. Uh, there's no easy way around fear. There's no easy way through pain. Psalm 23, that is perhaps a psalm of David, at least uh, attributed to David for sure. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And I can tell you, I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death in these last couple of months a couple of times, and and I didn't fear evil, but I did fear loss. I didn't fear pain because I, I knew we were doing everything for my mother and my stepfather possible. What I feared was losing them. What I, what I still am sad about is having lost them. Fear is all around us in one way or another. Fear looms over us like a giant and threatens us with taunts, playing on our greatest insecurities, cutting into our deepest, darkest fears. These giants in our lives today might be credit card debt or a loveless marriage, troubled children, aging parents, disease, war, poverty, death, grief, all of these giants seem so large as the blackness of our imaginations run wild with dark consequences. These giants threaten us and the fear is real. And as persons of faith, we should not give in so easily to these giants. Even though we know to claim the power of God in our lives, these giants continue to threaten us. Saul knew the giants of his day. At least he knew of Goliath. The Israelites knew of the giants. David's dad, Jesse, and David's brothers knew of the giants. And they were all a bit afraid to go to war with Goliath, but not David. He claimed a personal relationship with God. Let no man's heart fail because of the fear of Goliath. And as he stands before Goliath, he says, you Come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. Today, God will deliver me so that everyone will know there is a God in Israel. Sacred violence is, is not an issue that I really want to deal with, but it certainly is before us. I'm going to kill you in the name of God. That, that certainly is something we have to think about today. We have to think about giving in to fear, surrendering to fear. We also have to think about this sacred violence, claiming God to, as if God is approving of my violence towards you. Uh, we have to think about that. We also have to think about what God really hates. And, and what God really hates is when his people live in fear so much so that they turn to violence to escape that fear. I have more to say on that in a few minutes. For now, just understand that God is above all of this. God is bigger than all of this. God is more powerful than any of this. If only 
we will claim our strength in God and live accordingly. What does God require of us? What does God require of us? That we love deeply. That we do mercy, seek justice. And walk humbly. That's what God requires of us. And, and that is what David did. More on that in just a moment. As you move into this lesson, uh, Goliath was simply intimidating the army of Israel, the, so much so that they were paralyzed. Have you ever been paralyzed by a fear? What giants keep you awake at night? What giants do you give power to in your life? Not long ago, I had one of those nights. I was laying in bed at 2 o'clock in the morning worrying about rattlesnakes in my backyard and what a danger and a threat they posed when my grandchildren come over. Now, when my grandkids come over, they know better than to run wild in the back of my property, which is a natural piece of property, an undeveloped piece of property. And if they're going to be snakes, they're going to be snakes out there on that backside. My grandkids know better than to go there. Uh, truthfully, we've never seen a snake, a, a rattlesnake or a dangerous snake. One time in the six years we've lived here, we've seen a black snake. And so that's a good sign. Most of the time when my kids are here, we play in the driveway. But but I was paralyzed with fear that night, thinking that one of them would run out and be bitten by a snake. It was irrational, but it was a fear that intimidated me so much I just got up that night at two o'clock in the morning and, and fretted over it. Irrational fear, but I gave into the fear. I let that fear have power over me. And Paul says to us, and Jesus says to us, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. And we don't have to have violence to claim the power of God. We have to have faith. Faith over fear. Love wins over everything always. Did you ever get in trouble when you were a young person? Because you were filled with arrogance and impetuousness, and you just thought, I can do that. And you rushed off without thinking, and you did it, and you probably got in trouble for it. Um, tell some of your childhood, youth, adolescent stories about growing up and how that shaped you as you moved into adulthood. Those can be fun and uh, open up your class to talk about their fears a little bit more. So I give you several ways to enter into this lesson. And then the lesson itself begins at verse 37, when David is, uh, uh, verse 32, when David is brought before Saul and says, let no man's heart fail because of their fear. I'm paraphrasing that here. It says because of him, the giant. I'm paraphrasing a bit to say let no one fail because of their fear. David had been running supplies back and forth to the front lines, if you will. Several of David's brothers are in the army, and David is bringing provisions back and forth to them. 
and then he goes back home and tends his father's sheep, and then he goes back to the front lines, and he basically is recognized as a shepherd boy, and no one took him seriously. Verse 32, which I've shared with you several times, David, standing in front of Saul, says, he's not so tough. He's not too big to hit. He's too big to miss. So David's words get him an audience with Saul. And, and David says, let no heart fail because of fear. And Saul probably laughs at this shepherd boy. I know he laughed at him when he put his own armor on David and it just swallowed him so much so that David could not even move. And David says, I don't need this armor. Get this stuff off of me. I am equipped. And Saul probably continues to laugh and says, what in the, what in the world? And David says, the same God who delivered me from the bear and the lion will deliver me from this giant. I want you to hear that verse as well. Has there ever been a time when God has failed you, when God has abandoned you? I think not. I think there are times when we may have abandoned God, when we may have turned away from God, but I doubt there's ever been a time when God has abandoned you. God has always been there to to be at that source of strength for you to be that source of confidence. And David knew it. In my father's field, when I'm protecting the sheep, the lion and the bear come, God delivers me from them. This guy ain't so tough. And so Saul, having no other real option, says, okay, boy, go for it. At least that's how we say it in South Georgia. Goliath is not impressed either with this boy. He taunts David, but David stands firm. Bring it on, Goliath. I come in the name of the Lord our God. I ain't scared of you. I'm going to defeat you so that all the earth will know there is a God in Israel. I ain't scared of you. And David kills Goliath with one small stone. One small stone, not a whole army. The way you defeat debt is one dollar at a time. I'm developing a course right now on how to defeat debt and basically using the power of compounding one dollar at a time over time we defeat debt david had one small stone and he killed goliath it was it was not the violence that many would have uh, hoped for, or expected. David does go on to cut off Goliath's head and bring it to Jerusalem. All of that is pretty gruesome. Goliath is not impressed with David. And David says, I'm going to defeat you today in the name of the God of Israel. And David wins, and his destiny is forged. So what do we do with this sacred violence? Hopefully we've evolved beyond that a bit, but not really. This is not a children's story. This is an adult story. And sacred violence is, is still happening in our world. You don't have to look far in ancient history or modern history to see people claiming in the name of God what they're about to do. 
sacred violence is not the way of the Lord. Violence begets violence. We, we have seen that in our own history as a nation. Violence begets violence. Fear begets fear. Whether it's ancient or modern, violence in the name of God is dangerous. But David leads, David acts, not for his own glory, not for his own political party, not for uh, the name of Allah to be praised. David ignores his own self in the name and power of God. David leads not for what he's going to gain from it. Personal gain is not a consideration here. But peace is a consideration here. David leads without fear. And the New Testament changes the narrative. Love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. Love one another. That's the New Testament narrative. My enemies are not God's enemies. Think on that a minute. My enemies are not God's enemies. We've had this discussion before in several settings. And Lamont reminds us of that. If you think God is going to defeat your enemies because you hate them, uh, rest assured, you're worshiping the wrong God, is what Lamont says. Martin Niemöller, who fought against Hitler, raged against Hitler, finally came to the conclusion that Hitler was not the enemy of God. Evil is the enemy of God. God hates sin. God hates evil. Not Satan, but evil. Satan, if we are not careful, we will elevate Satan to the same level as God. God is up here over all. Satan and the enemies of darkness keep trying to break in to that. But God is more powerful than anything Satan can throw at us. David knew this. We're still trying to figure it out. <clears throat> Sacred violence, God does not approve of our sacred violence. The duality of evil, God is over evil. God is more powerful than evil. So why does God let evil happen? I don't have time to deal with that one this morning. But know this. Let no one's heart fail because of fear. And we must do whatever we can to overcome that fear. And how does that happen? By love. Let's pray together. God, so many questions that come from a simple children's story. So many questions that come from this story about the leadership of David. Help us, God, to understand that there is no God but you and that you don't tolerate fear because you have given us power Help us to claim that power. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. Bo and the Beard from the Center for Christian Education. Hey, if I can help you with debt and your struggle there, give me a holler. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, also, give me some emojis. I love seeing your thoughts and comments. 
as well. I uh, always love sharing with you, and this is a this is a holy place and a holy time for me. I hope the same is true for you. Bo Prosser and the Beard, hey, I'll see you next week. Till then, keep on rocking. <laughs>